<clears throat> hey everybody. So, today, Butch is. What do you think of when you think of Butch? Androgynous, masculine, they can fix your stuff. Well, that's, that's, you know, some of the definition of Butch. And uh, try to understand where the term came from, uh, the different uses of it, and what it actually means. The history behind the term butch it is, you know, in the Oxford Dictionary, as an example, it says something like, um, well, how do you define masculine in appearance and behavior, right? According to what? Our societal norms? We try to, to find a definition for that label. That's an accurate description, right? Of what a butch lesbian could be. Could be. Could be. <laughs> well, back in the 1900s, uh, the term butch meant like, like a tough kid. Or it would be also a men's haircut. And then in the 1920s, there was a couple of, um, of authors that came out. Gladys Bentley, and she referred to butches who usually have top hats and, and they have ties on and jackets. Now, I want to talk a little bit about race when it comes to this, too. In Black Harlem in the 1920s, they started using a uh, bull dyke. And um, there's a term that some people use, which is stud. And that term is actually reserved for butchers of color. If women of color presented at not feminine at all, they were automatically assumed to be a lesbian. And um, that kind of, they needed some sort of separation. So hence the term stud came about. As we move to the 1930s, there was no term for lesbian back then. So the gay world started to adopt prison slang. And that's when we came up with, um, with the slang of daddy, which is a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> um, there's also husband. And then now as we progress, into the 40s. It's not exactly known when the term butch comes into play. When World War II was going on, uh, women were in the factories and they were wearing pants. So it usually was like a working class woman was like a butch woman <laughs> or, uh, or a butch gay man was the more masculine. In the 70s, feminism started coming through. If you haven't seen the movie, If These Walls Could Talk too. Um, visits this couple who's actually played by Chloe Seven G and Michelle Williams. Actually, lesbians in general back then were kind of um, pushed out of feminism. Marginalized because now we represented the masculine aspects of women and Feminism was all about being more feminist and less masculine, right? I want to touch on a couple of things. Butch as a label and the definition of it can be so many different things. The founder of Herstory, her name was Joan. She was recalling back to the time when you used to be asked when you go into the bar, are you butch or are you femme? <laughs> There's a definition that I really enjoy by a woman named Gail Rubin. Butches identify primarily as masculine of center or prefer masculine of center signals, appearance, and style. That's a better definition only because it's more fluid, right? Let's talk about um, how I became a butch first, and then we'll get into what that means for each individual. I um, had some struggles with coming out because of the homophobia that was really prevalent in the late 80s and early 90s. In 1993, Brandon Tina was killed. And honestly, that, uh, that was rough because for them to rape and brutally murder Brandon, they didn't get jail time for it, but 
There's a book called Stone Butch Blues. It also came out in 1993. And this, this book is by Leslie Feinberg. But the biggest thing about that book that I took away from it was the, it's the coming of age time. Like back then it was rough and like what it was like going into the bars and dealing with different homophobia and different um, gender prejudice. The violence and things that, that Leslie was put through is in this book. Would they have been put through this if they were more feminine? Who knows? Probably because they identified as not a straight person. Something very important that she covers in this book is the difference between being butch and trans and that gray area in there. Right? There's a difference between being butch and being trans. Can you be both? Yes. Can you be one or the other? Yep. Uh, fems or thems too, right? Butch, in my opinion, is, is just a label. And I know that nowadays we are trying to get further and further away from labels. <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, but it's definitely a descriptive word. So there's pronouns that we all use, right? And when it comes to being butch, the androgyny tends to be closer and then we get pushed into, are you trans or not? And I can only speak for myself. I'm not trans. I am a woman, uh, but I do consider myself to be a butch woman. In fact, a stone butch woman. And that's okay. That's how I identify it. That doesn't make any other butches any less butchy. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we have those long hair butches out there, right? Represent. Um, it's not about your hair and your clothes and what you do in bed or your style. It's about finding out who you are. Then in 1997, a month later, the puppy episode, which it was called, aired. Where Ellen announced to the world she was gay. And then with the, the uh, movie that I've discussed before, Boys on the Side, those two were instrumental in me coming out. In fact, the Ellen episode, I think came out about four months before I got my first girlfriend. So it was right on that track. Now, when I first started dating women, I would say that I still was fairly butch. Like I've been a tomboy my whole life, but I had long hair. I think the point that I would like to get to here is that it's about finding yourself and not letting outside influences do anything other than educate you on finding out who you truly are. By following your passion and being an authentic person, if that happens to lead you into the realm of being butch and that's how you identify, or that is you being authentic, okay? So as long as you're authentic, I don't care what your label is, butch, femme, anything in between. I think that what it is, or what it kind of comes off as, is Butch is a little bit of an attitude, right? So you have this attitude about things and um, you tend to come off as a little more direct sometimes. The webpage WikiHow has three methods on how to be more Butch. You can look like one, act like one, or just give off that vibe. When you're becoming Butch, it's an evolvement that happens. Shopping in a store and shopping in the men's section, figuring out what size you are in men's versus women. If you have a female shaped body, sometimes how things don't quite fit the same way. Um, but buying clothes, like, you know, going to Nordstrom Rack and finding these clothes that you try on and you, you look at yourself and you're like, oh, oh, this feels like me. People aren't sure they're scared to try on different things, but you can like just go to stores and try stuff on, right? You can go into that dressing room. Some people get a little freaked out by um, having to talk to the person at the dressing room when you have men's clothing in your hand. They don't care. I've never had an issue with that that I can recall. The big one I think is cutting your hair. A lot of women think in order to present butch, hair cutting is kind of part of it. But you don't have to. Honestly, you don't. There's there's no preconceived set hair length. Like once once my hair gets to here, I'm not a butch anymore. That's, you know, 
That's not how that works. I find that if you want to present that, then sure, it helps. Is it more obvious that if you cut your hair short? Sure, I guess. You can also just be a low maintenance cis straight chick, who knows? And let me tell you something, by the way, short hair is no joke. I have to take more care of short hair than I did my long hair, let's be real. But you know, you can go in steps too. Maybe you wanna just trim a little bit. You know, you don't have to just go full out, let's G.I. Jane shave our head first thing, but you have all these old clothes. You know, those dresses that you haven't worn for years. <laughs> those feminine shoes you will never wear again. You don't need to burn it immediately. You don't need to get rid of it immediately. In fact, I would recommend you donate your stuff, obviously. Um, check out any uh, local queer or uh, people of color places to donate. So when, when you're presenting with that, you're butch, it is different um, in a couple of ways. One is sometimes you are seen as the enemy in the sense that you are a cis male all of a sudden. <laughs> There's a stigma that comes along with being more masculine of center presenting. Things and little hurdles that if you haven't been masculine of center you may not have realized. Uh, and these things are not warnings. Make sure you're ready for, for some of that experience because some of it can be a little bit shocking. Uh, you will forget that you look as such. And when you go, as an example, when you go to the bathroom, the looks that you get when you go to go into the bathroom, when you're walking into the bathroom, when you're leaving the bathroom, uh, it happens to me all the time. Anytime I am out and I go into the bathroom, I would say 80% of the time, somebody gives me that look of like, that double take of like, wait, what are you, are you in the... Along with pronouns, which is a whole separate thing, right? Whatever pronouns, because let's be real, with gender identity, which is totally different than, than this, this particular label, there are gay men that are butch. There are, there are straight people that can be considered butch. It's about um, traditional masculinity versus gender. So we have been put into this societal mind frame of uh, toxic ma masculinity, which is absolutely a thing. And a lot of butch women do have it because we've been trained as butch women to have it. If you're, if you're taking on this masculine of center role, you take on all that that entails, which means some sort of, you know, semblance of control. In fact, it can be related to that in a lot of ways. Like look at anybody's sexuality and their sex lives and the things that they like and the things that they don't like. Um, it's all based upon our past life experiences and what we've seen, what our examples have been. It doesn't mean you want to be a man. I would always suggest just like asking for pronouns, what people are comfortable with, because sometimes there's, there's gender charged words. Um, like converting from somebody who might be more feminine to more butch, you used to hear, oh my God, you're so pretty. Why'd you cut your hair? Oh, that's the worst, right? Um, thank you because I'm trying to be my authentic self. Sorry, I disappointed you for my hair length. Yeah, find yourself. Uh, you don't even mind going into the men's bathroom and peeing in there. None of that bothers you, right? But you love when one of your ladies calls you a pretty princess. It just melts your heart. You, you can't help it. Uh, usually pe people tend to, to say handsome and uh, I'm cool with that. I like it. It's okay to be a beautiful butch though. And as well as all the, the masculine, you know, um, boy, uh, any of that stuff that you feel like you identify with, trans, any of it, um, that's great. Just be your authentic self. And if that's butch, cool. <laughs> Relationships. If you're butch, you are probably pinholed in that, oh, so you want to be a man, so you like women, like feminine women? In my personal opinion, some of the hottest interactions I've ever had was butch on butch. Like, I myself am the toppiest of top and I love to top other tops because I know where that ability to relax and know somebody can do that for you. <laughs> People who are tops 
without wanting to be a top necessarily and and that's okay like all of that stuff is okay if you're a butch on butch butch femmes there's so many different terms like masculine versus feminine and it's just what you're attracted to you know and, and don't shy away from that and don't try to be something that you're not to attract other kinds of people be your authentic self uh, butches aren't always dominant I know, speaking from my own experience as a, as a service top, that people automatically assume that I'm super kinky, um, and I'm not. I, I consider myself to be fairly French vanilla. I want to please my partner, so if I can figure out how to do something that they're asking for, and I feel confident that I can do that for them, absolutely, I'm open to all that. This is all just my opinion and things that I have experienced. Um, I always want to stress that because I cannot speak for every person, <laughs> not even remotely. A couple of terminology things that I want to discuss, being androgynous. And sometimes that comes with being a incorrect woman. I am not, because I am a butch, an incorrect woman. I'm a woman who identifies as a masculine of center stone butch. That's me. So not everybody has to identify like that. There's a lot of prejudice with that butch stigma. It still associates butch women with toxic masculinity, and it's just not necessarily the case. As a butch presenting woman, you are presumed to be the dominant person. If there's any aggression whatsoever in that relationship, you are presumed to be the aggressor. Uh, there are a lot of stereotypes about the fact that butch women tend to be more aggressive, domineering, controlling, and they're not wrong. Again, I touched on that earlier, but we're trained to be like that. And just love each other. I don't care how you look, how short or long your hair is, just be kind. Because all of us have our different struggles um, and things that, that they get stereotyped or pinholed into, no matter what our identities are. I hope that you found this Butch 101 video somewhat informative. I'll see y'all next time.